Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tim. This is another Real Ideal Gear Review. And today we're looking at a watch from AliExpress, a Baltany. And this watch kind of got my attention in a backdoor kind of way because my first impressions of this watch were not really positive. I looked at the watch, I thought, eh, nah, it's got, it has kind of that steampunk look to it. At the same time, I kind of like the look of that. It has kind of a, a Nautilus type look as well, like a, a portal off of an old 1920s ship that would go across the Atlantic. And so when I looked at this watch a little bit more closely, looked at the specs, I thought, I'm going to try this watch. So we're going to go through the five things we typically go through, size, fitment, finish, accuracy, and then legibility and loom. And we're going to spend a little more time just talking about just the design of this watch. It is thoroughly interesting. The size of this watch is a 40 millimeter case. It has a 13.2 millimeter height off the wrist and the strap is a 20 millimeter strap. So easy strap changes. So as far as the proportions of this watch, I love it. That 40 millimeter case with a 13.2, that really kind of keeps it out of the chunky zone for me as far as a watch goes. But I like the proportions and I love the crown, the crown size. It's great, perfect size for a crown, great grip on the crown. It doesn't stick out too much. It almost has kind of a slender look to it because it's closer to the case, but it has just enough grip where I think the size of the crown and the knurling in the crown or the coin edge, the coin edge on the crown does a really good job of giving you some good texture and good grip to, to manipulate the crown whenever you need to. Now let's move on to fitment. Now of course this has a very good leather strap. It's very thick. I love the thickness of this leather strap. I think this is one of the better leather straps I've gotten from AliExpress. So I'm very impressed and I love the texture on it. It's just a really great strap. Now there was kind of this weird clicking sound when I was using this watch and putting taking it on and off. And I'll play it here on the microphone. And I think what it is, there's a little bit of play inside the lugs where the spring bar goes in. I took the, the uh, strap off, took the spring bar out to make sure that the spring bar ends were not loose or the case hadn't been widened a little bit. So the ends were kind of loose in there. And the spring bar actually is a solid looking spring bar. So now my conclusion is I think the lug holes might be just a little bit too big. So maybe a quality control issue. But honestly, when you're wearing it, you don't hear it. It doesn't like click like that when you're wearing it. It only clicks like that when I force it to do that. So I don't think this is a huge ding, but it is a ding for this watch. I'm not impressed with it. But at the same time, it's one of those little quirky things that uh, maybe it just, uh, I don't know. So moving on to the finish. Now, this is where this watch is incredibly interesting. Starting with the case, you have the high polished sides on the, on the case, which I think adds a little bit of a dressy feature to it. And then everything else from the top looking down is all, is all brushed. And so to me, you have this brushed look, but then when you turn it to the side, you get this high polished look that has kind of a dressier feel to it. So you kind of go back and forth between this casual and more dressy look to this watch. Now, once you get past the case, you can't help but look at the bezel. The bezel is a bronze bezel with stainless steel ball bearings in it, or stainless steel balls in there. And if you look carefully, the 12 o'clock stainless steel ball is slightly bigger than all of the others. And I didn't pick up on that right away, but I love that subtle touch so that all the hour markers are doubled up with one of those stainless steel balls on the bezel itself. So the bezel is going to darken up over time because it's bronze, it's gonna patina. The same thing with the crown, it's also a bronze crown. So both of these are gonna get a darker look to them. So what you're seeing right now, is gonna have a little more of a black hue to it as it patinas over time. And I'll show you a quick video or a quick photo actually of the Zelos hammerhead that I have that's bronze, it's a bronze case. And you can kind of see the direction that this bronze is going to go over time which I think is fantastic. It goes great with the, with the strap. And uh, the overall look of the watch, the dark burgundy dial, it's just going to have a nice, great color match between that darker bronze, that burgundy dial, the black strap, and then you've got the brushed uh, stainless steel finish on top and the high polish on the side. So this kind of goes back to what I was talking about. Like you look at this and it's almost like it's piecemeal together, but it's done in such a way that it kind of has an artistic feel to it. So I really do enjoy it. I think, it's, I think it really works well. Now let's move into the dial because the dial is where there is a sunburst burgundy, deep burgundy color. And then you have that Fotina hour markers on there. The 12 o'clock has the triangle. The three, six, and nine have the batons and the uh, circles or the small 
uh, maybe circle pips, whatever you want to call it, on the other hour markers. Outside of that, you have a great minute track, so it's easy to keep track of the hours, the minutes, if you want to do that. And I just think the legibility of this watch is stunning based upon the color selection that they've chosen for the dial, for the markers. And then the bezel just kind of sets things off along with those stainless steel ball bearings. So your eye just naturally goes to where it needs to go to tell the time. Now, what about the accuracy of this watch? It's an NH38 movement, so you don't have the date. There's no ghost date on here. It's just a straight uh, hour, minute change uh, movement, so it's great. I love it. The accuracy of this watch is well within specs. There's no issues there. So overall, the accuracy, the finish of this watch is outstanding. And uh, aside from that clicking sound, which I'm going to try a different spring bar. Maybe the different spring bar is going to fix this. Um, I just don't find anything wrong with this watch on the outside, looking at the dial, looking at the bezel. Now, what about the legibility in the loom? Well, of course, we've already talked a little bit about the legibility. It's fantastic. The hour markers are great. You can identify the 12. It's differentiated from the other hour markers and the 3, 6, and 9 as well. So the quadrants of the watch are all uh, differentiated really well. And I love the contrast between the hands and the dial. The handset is great. It's a flat facet uh, handset. So you do get a little bit of a reflection off of this. I don't think they're polished. I'm looking really closely at this and it doesn't look like it's polished. It looks like it has a real fine brushing to it, but it does reflect a little bit of light at a certain angle. So I kind of like that. I wish it was kind of a, a multifaceted type handset, but at the same time, I do like the fact that it's subdued just like the hour markers are subdued. And of course, that dial with the sunburst dial really helps with some of the contrasting as well. It kind of gives the, the dial, it breaks it up a little bit so that the hands don't get too, I don't know, lost in the monotony of the dial because it is a pretty simple dial, but that sunburst dial kind of breaks everything up and gives it some dimensions to it so that the handset actually, I think, stands out even more as a result of that. Now, what about the loom? Now, the loom is Baltany. It's great. Baltany is known for good loom to excellent loom. This is excellent loom. It lasts all night. I've done the test several times. I've actually worn this watch to work because I just wanted to see how it would handle some extra duties. Um, I'm not a huge fan of wearing a leather strap when I'm going out to work because of sweat and water and all that kind of stuff, but it was a cool day and I didn't think I was going to sweat, so I didn't. Um, and at the same time, it was not a rainy day either. Very comfortable watch to wear, and I just love the look of this watch. I was just, I'd get in the truck and I'd go from one place to the next and I'd look at that watch like, man, this is a cool looking watch. It has that steampunk look to it, and for me, the legibility is awesome. The, lo the loom is awesome. There's so many good things about this watch that I really like. And it really kind of grows on you. You know, the <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It just, it has that look that you look a second time and you're in. That's the way I, that's the only way I can explain this watch. Now, what about the uses of this watch? Well, I wore this to, wa to work because it has a sapphire crystal, 200 meters of water resistance, has an NH38 movement, so it's a solid movement. Yeah, you can wear it for, you know, typical uh, office work. You can wear it for some light duty work. I wouldn't wear this for like using a powered chainsaw or jackhammer or anything like that because it's, it's an automatic movement. But I do use it when I was using my, my gas powered blower, my gas powered trimmer. Nothing that was really too vibrating as far as gas powered tools go. So I thought it was all right for that. So for uses, I think this goes all the way from work, probably work, but for sure casual all the way up into that that professional look. I think this is going to have kind of one of those head turner type looks to it where people are going to look at that watch twice and just kind of wonder what is going on with that bezel because it's, there's something kind of interesting about that bezel. They may not like it. They may really like it. I think it's kind of a polarizing look. But as far as uses go, I think it really covers a wide range of uses. Now, the positives of this watch, it's everything that we've mentioned so far. The case is great. The sapphire crystal, the 200 meters of water resistance, NH38 movement. You've got a really interesting design. You've got polish on the side. You've got brushed surfaces on the top. So you have that subdued look looking down at it. But when you look at it from the side, it has a little more classy feel to it. Great leather strap. The downside to this watch, and this is the only thing that is wrong with this watch, is that click. If that click wasn't there, this would be a perfect watch. I would... I still highly recommend this watch. I'm going to find a way. I think it's just an oversized uh, lug hole maybe, or it may be still a little bit loose on that spring bar. I'll have to find different spring bars and see if that resolves the issue. But overall, this is a 9.8 out of 10. I just love this watch. I think it's a cool looking watch. It has a unique feel to it. And Baltany really is stepping up to the plate to do things that are a little bit different, which I really appreciate. And kudos to Baltany and San Martin for doing some of these things that are just a little bit away from the homage market into like, 
yeah, we can do something a little bit different on our own. And they've done a great job with this watch. I highly recommend it, 9.8. Check it out. Um, check out my webpage, realidealgear.com. There's also watches that I've reviewed that I'll uh, have for sale there. Some of them have even uh, flashlights that go with them, kind of just to, to sweeten the deal because some of those cheaper watches, like the Casio watches, for me, the shipping costs enough. <laughs> and so I just add the flashlight into that uh, mix because it just kind of makes the whole package worth more. So check that out. I've also got some limited edition watches and some other cool watches. I'm going to be adding a slew of watches within the next two weeks. So pay attention to the website. You're going to see a bunch of reviewed watches that I've got in the catalog and the video uh, playlist. A bunch of those are going to go for sale because now I'm getting to the point where I feel like I have too many watches. So there you go. Realidealgear.com. Check it out. Thank you for watching. My name is Tim. This has been another Real Ideal Gear Review. And we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> Welcome.